You may live to be a hundred years old, but if you have not been saved, it will end with the grave. But I want us to be together in heaven. I want us to be together. of the house of Saul, that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. When they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may shew the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Micar, the son of Amuel, in Lodabar. 
Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Michal, the son of Amuel, uh, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, I'm sorry, and, and David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look up, uh, look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy son, thy servants, shalt till the land for him, and thou shalt bring him in the fruit, and thy master's son, that thy master's son, may eat fruit, may eat food rather, food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And Ziba said, and then said, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's son. And Mephibosheth was a young son, had a, had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet." Our Father, thank you that you know everything. Thank you, Lord, that this day did not catch you off guard. And I trust in you, O God of heaven, that you will continue to perform your will for your glory, your honor, and your praise. Again, Father, we lift up Brother George and Miss Dana unto you. Lord, meet the need and minister unto them as you only can. Father, we are praying as well for the congregation. Lord, that our hearts and our souls, O God, Lord, we are concerned, but for this moment of time, may we be fixed and focused upon you. God, I'm asking that you will touch every heart, every soul, every individual that is here. God, there are people that need to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. God, your bride, O oh Lord, there are those that have gone astray and their hearts have gotten cold. I pray that you do that work that only you can. I thank you again, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, and I thank you that we can pray all this in your name. Give us that unction to function right now, and that liberty to deliver what thus saith the Lord. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And amen. Thank you for standing here, church. Church, as we read this wonderful story, and it is a wonderful story, may I say that? As we read this wonderful story of the kindness of King David here, and how he shows such kindness to a household and to people that didn't show much kindness to him, can I say that is something that we need in this world today, amen? We need a little more kindness, church. Amen. Hey, we need a little more kindness in the day that we live in. But also, when we see this beautiful story, what we're seeing is a wonderful picture of a covenant-keeping God. Our God keeps His Word. Amen. Our God keeps His covenant. He keeps His promises. And so I want you to see just a couple of things here, and we'll give to you the thought that the Lord's laid upon our hearts. Number one, I want you to see the consideration of the King. The consideration of of the king. In verse number one, David is asking a question. He said, is there any of the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? I remind you now, the house of Saul did not love David as David loved the house of Saul. It reminds me of the love of God. You know, God loves mankind, but mankind doesn't love God in return of such way. But David here, he says, I want to show kindness to this house. He's considering this here. And the way that is phrased and the 
way that is, uh, is, is uh, dictated here in the Scriptures, it's kind of like David was pondering this thought, and he was dwelling upon this in his mind, and he could have been even doing this right here, Church Carol. He could have been going through the mansion, through his palace there, and just asking people randomly, say, hey, do you know if there's anyone that's left at the house of Saul? And so the word gets back, and he says, hey, there is a servant of the household of Saul. His name is Ziba. Now, I love this here. Why? Because the Bible tells us over there in Psalms chapter number 8 and in verse number 4, what is man that thou art mindful of him? He said, thy thoughts are too much for me. And the God of heaven now, he's a covenant-keeping God, but his mind is toward man. Look at the king here and his consideration. He said, I want to show kindness to the household of Saul. But then I want you to notice with me as well. We see this right here, that he wants to show his kindness because why? He made a promise. D David made a promise to Jonathan over in 1 Samuel chapter number 20 that he would make sure that his household would be blessed. Matter of fact, Jonathan said, I know that you're the one. He said, I know that you're the one that's going to be king. I take off my garment. I put my, uh, pre uh, my princely garments upon you. I acknowledge you're, you're going to be the one that's going to lead Israel here and remember my household. David said, I promise you, I will take care of your family. And we see this here. David now is saying, is there anyone I'm considering? I want to make sure and show such kindness here to the house of Saul. And then we recognize this as well, the consideration of the king. But then I want you to see the condition of Mephibosheth. The condition of Mephibosheth. We find him here in verse number three. Ziba comes to King David and he tells King David, yes, Jonathan has a son and his name is Mephibosheth. He's lame there of his feet. The Bible tells us how he became lame of his feet there. You find that as well in 1 Samuel. He was lame of his, leave, his feet there because of a nurse. A nurse that was taking care of him when he was about the age of five years old. And what happened? King Saul died. Word got back to the palace there. And boy, and anybody knows in that time when the king is overtaken and when the king dies and one rises to power, they typically get rid of the other family. So this nurse now, just out of impulse, said, hey, they're going to come after uh, Mephibosheth. They're going to come after Jonathan's son, and I need to carry him off. So in her haste there, she drops Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth breaks both of his feet there and remain lame even to the time that we're at now. And some believe that Mephibosheth, and it's hard for me to say that word. I'm, I get a little tongue-tied there. But Mephibosheth, he's about 25 years old now, and we see his condition that he could not take care of himself. He was a lame man that relied upon others there. And in essence, what we see the condition of Mephibosheth, that Mephibosheth, he had nothing to offer to anyone. Beloved, may I say this right here? That's every single one of us. You and I, we are sinners, and boy, we have nothing to offer anybody. The only thing that we have good to offer anyone is the good that God has done inside of you if you're saved today. But I want to let you know that there's none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. And we see the condition of Mephibosheth. But then I want you to see this as well. The consideration of the king, the condition of Mephibosheth, but the care of the king. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he cares. Amen. We see David here that he's talking to Mephibosheth. And I love this right here. Now you read this, and we don't have time to really dissect this as much as I would love to. I really would love to, Now I promise you. But if you notice the first verse of the scripture there, that it refers to King David. David as being king. David as being king. And now we see the care of the king, how he talks to Mephibosheth. And it said David. It didn't say King David. It didn't say the King David. It said David. That's what the Bible says. Talk to Mephibosheth. In essence, David was coming to him meek and lowly there and gentle. He wasn't coming to him as a tyrant there, as one of judgment. No, he come to show kindness. So we see the care of the king. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that King David, he kept his word, praise God. He kept his promises and he showed kindness there. That kindness, praise the Lord, is another word that we use in the house of God as grace. Amen. Hey, David was giving grace 
grace instead of judgment. David was giving love instead of hatred. Hallelujah. Here the king is saying now, I'm come to be a blessing to you. And I will let you know as well that the word of God tells you and I that the God of heaven has promised in his word. He said over there in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 9, he said he's going to send his son. He's going to be the counselor. He's going to be the one that the world, he said, is going to sit upon his shoulders there and his name will be Emmanuel, God with you and I. And that's exactly what he did, praise God. On that wonderful night that he told the shepherds not to be in fear, he said, hey, why? Because God has come down to dwell among man. I want you to know that our God, hallelujah, he still keeps his word. We see this here, the care of the king. Now, church, I'm so glad, hallelujah, that he cares. But then I want you to see the conclusion of the story. I tell you, it's a wonderful story now. And I hope that you're hanging tight with us now. In verse number 12 and verse number 13, we see what took place. Mephibosheth was a young man there, and he dwelled the house, right, the, the house there with, uh, with Ziba. But now he's a servant. He's dwelling in Jerusalem, and he's continually, in verse number 13, he's continually at the king's table. We see the conclusion of the matter. Hey, well, I'll let you know, Brother Randy, here we see this in the conclusion of it, that in an instant, Mephibosheth's life was changed. Amen. In an instant there, he was once poor. He had nothing to his name. He had no property. He had no houses. He had nothing given unto him. But in a very instant there, oh, Mephibosheth was no longer a poor man, but he was a rich man. In the very instant, we see that Mephibosheth he had no position in life, but now where is he sitting at? He's sitting on the king's table. Hallelujah. Hey, Mephibosheth, in a very instant there, he had no place to lay his head there. He was sleeping in somebody else's house, but praise be unto God, now we see him, he's sleeping in the king's house. Amen. I'm just telling you, hallelujah, the conclusion of the matter there is that the story with God, if you're going to side with God, hallelujah, it's going to end up being a good story. Amen. Hallelujah to that, church. In a very instant there, all things changed for Mephibosheth. And say, why are you saying this here, preacher? Why? Because I believe that this world we're living in today has a lot of Mephibosheths. I believe that there's some right now in the congregation that I'm talking to that you can recognize and you are that Mephibosheth. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? We're living in a time of distress. We're living in a time of fear. We're living in a time where people are helpless and they cannot help them Themselves. But I've got good news, hallelujah. I thank God there's a God in heaven that can help the helpless. Amen. Listen to me now. Hey, there's some of you, you're in the house of my car. Hey, the house of my car simply means that it's a place where people don't care about others. They want to sell out each other. They want to sell each other. A, a place of betrayal. And some of you, you're going through that. I mean, your heart's being broken. You don't know who to trust, who you can lean on. You don't know who you can call on. But I've got good news. Hallelujah. There's a man by the name of Jesus. Praise God. He's closer than a brother. Amen. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Father, and you can trust in him. Amen. Hey, there are many of you now, you're living in such a lifestyle in my car where people are selling you out, but also there's some of you now, you're living in the land of Lodabar. You don't have to live in the land of Lodabar. Say, preacher, what are you saying? Hey, that land of Lodabar, it's a place with no pastures. Hey, man. Hey, I'm not talking about a pastor, but pastures. Why do you need a pastor? You need something that's going to fill you up. Hey, man. Hey, you need something that's going to satisfy you. I want to let you know this world's not going to satisfy you. The God of this world's not going to satisfy you. The flesh, sin will not satisfy you. And you're living in Lodabar. And you need to come to the king's house. Hallelujah. You need to come to King Jesus today and say, happy am I. Jesus is mine forever. I'm satisfied with just a little cottage below. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied with Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you are looking for this world to fill up that void on the inside. It ain't going to take place. Oh, Lodabar. A load of ours, a place as well where they says they had no bread. Uh -huh. That it was a land that had no bread. Now we love bread at the Pope House. Amen. Amen. We like eating bread. We've got one. I believe that he would live on bread all day long. He'd eat it in the morning, he'd eat it for lunch, and he'd eat it at night. That's just who he is. I ain't going to name no names, but his name's Wyatt. Amen. I'm telling you, that boy, he'll eat bread all day long. We run out of bread, we're in trouble, right? I believe he's going to starve to death. But that's what we see what's happening there in Lodabar. 
Here was Mephibosheth. He was starving. He didn't have nothing that filled him up on the inside. Oh, I'm grateful, hallelujah, that the Bible says, Therefore, for many men be in Christ. Amen. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away, but all things are made new. I'm glad that the Bible tells us that greater is he is in us than he that is in the world. I'm glad that the Bible tells us that we have the earnest of our inheritance. Say, preacher, I don't understand exactly what you're talking about. If you get born again by the good grace of God, the Holy Spirit of God will move on the inside. And my beloved, he will change your desires and he will satisfy you. Just Christ and Christ alone. That's all that you need. Amen. Hey, you need the Lord. Amen. Stop going out to this world world because it will leave you empty and dry. Hey, you can go out to the bars. You can go out to the honky tonks. You can go wherever you want to but none of it will satisfy you like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm persuaded of that. I hope that you are as well. Oh, Lodabar, a place of dryness and bareness. Oh, come to the king. Amen. Come to the king's palace. Praise God. Oh, where there's bread. Yes. What did Jesus say? He said, I'm the bread, right? Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this. My mind's going racing back to this right here. I don't know if my Aunt Claudia, she might listen to this, maybe or not. But I remember that little kid. I remember the little kid. And Aunt Claudia, she'd make that old bread. I believe it might have been, I can't remember what kind of bread it was. But boy, it was good bread. Amen. I should say this right here. I can't remember. It's all types of bread. Right? But it was fresh bread. Y'all ever had fresh bread? Come on now. Amen. Boy, it would permeate the house, right? Amen. Oh, when Jesus is in your life, friend. Oh, I'm telling you, he's like that fresh bread. Amen. And boy, just fills up your life. He does. He fills you up there and you can say, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Amen. Are you satisfied with the Lord? Hallelujah. We see now there's some of you, you're living in my car's house where nobody cares about you. They don't respect you. They don't reverence you. They don't love you there. Some of you are living now in the land of Lodabar. There's no pasture. There's no food there. Oh, but my beloved, there's even some of you, you're at the lowest of your life. You're crippled. You're crippled and you're bound up there in the wages of sin. You have been hurt by the sins you've committed and the sins of others as well. I want to let you know that's exactly how we see Mephibosheth, that he was a crippled man. Can you imagine that living such a life? Of hurt. Living such a life that you couldn't do nothing. We, we cannot recognize that. We can't. Because here's this man now. He could not dress himself. No. He could not go anywhere. He couldn't work. He couldn't provide for the family. He had a boy. Now, how that happened, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us, but we know how the boys come about. Amen. We know that, right? Amen. All right. Okay. But he had a boy. But he couldn't go out there and maintain a job. He couldn't work. He didn't earn. He didn't have no fields. He had nothing to do there. He didn't have no jobs to commit to. He was a man that was helpless. And had to what? Rely upon those that just wanted to benefit from his name. You read about that house of my car. Oh, this is, this is Jonathan's son. This is King Saul's grandson. Carried his name. That's all they were worried about. And all they could get out of him. Beloved, I'm telling you, there's some of you right now. You're just like old Mephibosheth. You're crippled. Sin's done a number in your life. And it has hurt you. And you know who you are. You know exactly where you are. Now that might entail you being lost. Still bound up by sin. You haven't been set free through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you need to be saved this morning. But then again, it might be you. That you've got that sin that you keep going back to. And you hadn't gotten victory over. And you are out there at your lowest. Here it is, the wonderful news. The same decree that was given by King David. He said, is there anyone of the household of Saul that I can show kindness to? The kindness of God. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is saying the same thing. But if I can phrase it this way, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, is there any of the house of Adam that I can show kindness to? Beloved, every single one of us are sinners. We woke up this morning and you sinned. You're going to lay your head down at night and you're going to sin. Say, preacher, not me. Oh, that's what the Bible says. If any man says that he has not sinned, he's a liar. Amen. Oh, yes. You sin. You're either a sinner that's saved by the grace of God or you're a sinner that's on your way to hell. That's it. That's it. That's the only two categories. There is no in-between. 
But I'm letting you know, regardless of what category you are in, the king is still calling. The king is still making that decree. I want to show kindness to whoever of the household of Adam. If you're here today, there's a God in heaven, hallelujah, who wants to be gracious unto you, who wants to be kind unto you, who wants to show such loving kindness like no one else. Can I say this right here? When we talk about the grace of God, it surely does surpass all understanding. Amen. Hey, that's what that word kindness is, God's grace grace there. And boy, we sing those wonderful songs to try to get a better glimpse of it. Amazing grace. And it is amazing. Hallelujah. Hey, the marvelous grace of God. It is a marvelous thing that the God of heaven would be gracious unto you and I. Unto you and me today. But I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that the God of heaven, he wants to show such divine act of grace in your life. The grace of God. We talk about it so much there. Of his kindness, of his favor, his unmerited favor. God's riches at Christ is spits because I say about the grace of God, it does what no one else and nothing else can do. The grace of God is a supernatural act of God in your personal life. Because nobody else received this blessing but who? Mephibosheth. Amen. Mephibosheth received a blessing here from the king because why? He answered the call. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I hope you have answered the call. I hope you answered the call and said, is there anyone of the household of Adam that I can show favor to? That I will show kindness to? The God of heaven wants to show that to you and I. And beloved, I love this. Praise God. I'm talking about you are a sinner. You're bound up by sin. And boy, the sin's got you shackled up. But thanks be unto God, Jesus Christ can set you free. Amen. The Bible tells us it's here in Romans chapter 5 and Romans chapter 5 and verse number 19 says for what? By one man disobedience many were made sinners so that obedience of one shall many be made righteous. More of the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abound grace did much more abound. Amen. Hallelujah. I got news for you today. Praise God. It doesn't matter how low you are, how hurt you are, how bound up by sin you are. There's grace my dear beloved. There's grace for you. The grace of God abounds and surpasses anything that any man has ever done. Hallelujah. There's no sin that's greater than the grace of God. Yes. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Amen. Oh boy. Maybe it's just me rejoicing in the Lord over this, but I'm thankful. Amen. Hey, I want to let you know you're not righteous. Amen. Amen. Your righteousness is filthy rags. Ain't even worth to be burnt. Oh yeah. Say preacher, how dare you talk about me? I didn't say that. That's what God said about you. Amen. But God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because he's a God that keeps his covenant. He's a God that keeps his word. That he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're saved, but I know that I'm saved. Praise God. And I'm just grateful, praise the Lord, that no matter what I've done in my past, Brother Tony, no matter what sins I've committed, hallelujah, none of them are greater than the grace of God. And even right now, if I couldn't exhaust the grace of God when I was lost, I'm not going to exhaust the grace of God now that I'm saved. Yes! Whew, I'm going home now. I'm going home now. I'm just telling you, that's just good stuff. Hallelujah. Say, preacher, you mean you're going to go out there and sin however you want to? Oh, no. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. Man, but I'm thankful, hallelujah, when I fall, I can still hear the king calling my name. Amen. I can still hear him calling my name. I'm letting you know this right here. Hey, maybe you've fallen short of the glory of God. You're lost today. You know that you're lost. See, some of you are good at playing games now. Some of you are good at playing chances and playing chances with this thing of salvation. But beloved, you better make your call and election sure. You better know that you know that you know that you're saved. Why? Today might be your last day. It might be your last hour. This might be your last chance here. I told Sister Taylor this before church. This might be my last chance to preach the Word of God, to spend time with the family of God. And if that happens, I will let you know, hallelujah. No preacher didn't die, hallelujah. He started living, praise God. Because when I leave this world, I'm going to a place that's fairer than day. Amen. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Are you? You're going to heaven. Amen. Oh, listen to me now. He's a crippled man. There's some of you, you sin, you're crippled there. But I've got good news. God will keep his word. He'll save whosoever. There's some of you, you're in the wrong land right now. You're living in a heartless world. You're living among people that do not love you. I've got good news. Hallelujah. The king's family, the house of God, the family of God is here waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. You need to stop living out there in Lodabar. You need to stop living out there in my car's house. And you need to come back to God's house. 
Amen. Hey, listen to me as well. Some of you, you're eating at the wrong table. And boy, you're trying to get this world and the thing that it has. You're trying to eat the food there that it has to offer to you. But beloved, all you're doing is you're doing what we talk about at the house. Our boys, they'll say, what are we eating? And I'll tell them, we're eating air biscuits. Uh-huh. That's what we're eating. See, some of you are like the same way. You know, if you try to eat an air biscuit, what's going to happen? You're going to come up as empty. You know that. Oh, yeah. That's what this world's going to offer to you now. Say, preacher, how do you know that? I tried it. I've tasted it. I've indulged in it. I've done things that I'm ashamed of. I was talking to a man just this week here. I said, I've done things, and I got addicted to things, and I got addicted to certain things that this world had to offer. And all it did was take, 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 take. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And boy, it's just robbing you. Leaving you empty, leaving you dry. But hallelujah, when Jesus came into my life, when he came into my soul, when he came into my heart, happy am I, satisfied am I. This is what Jesus does. Stop eating at the wrong table. Come to the king's table today. Come to his table right now. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful. Here's what he's saying to you now. He's saying, come. He said, fear not. Don't be afraid. So many people, when you listen, listen well. Oh, I'm trying to hurry up and I'm trying to find a place to stop. But I'm telling you now, David met with Mephibosheth and he told Mephibosheth, fear not. See, some of you, you've got that mindset about God. You've got that perception about God that you got to clean yourself up. You got to be a better person there, that you got to do all these things and have something to offer unto God. God's not looking for anything that you have to offer because I'll tell you this, we have nothing to offer him, but he has everything to offer unto you and I, hallelujah. And I'm glad, praise God, that he'll take me and my worthlessness and he'll make something out of my life, amen. That's what he'll do for you, amen. That's what he'll do for you. That's all he's saying, fear not. But I want you to notice this now. I told you in an instant, right? In an instant, his life was changed. In an instant, Mephibosheth, boy, the story changed, right? How did that happen? I want you to notice this now. Look with me in the Word of God. The Bible tells us right here, and we find, I'll find my place, I promise you. Here we are. Mephibosheth said to David, first and foremost, in verse number 8, he bowed himself and said unto him, said, What is thy servant? That thou shouldest what? Look upon him. Look upon him. And then notice how he referenced himself. He said, I'm a dead dog. A dead dog has nothing to offer. A dead dog in those days was the lowest of lowest animals. He said, I'm but a dog and I have no life. He said, I'm a dog there. He said, I'm wretched. I'm vile. I'll turn on my master. And any of you who've got a dog, you know they will. It's an old saying, that dog will bite the hand that feeds him. Say, said, preacher, not mine. You wait, little foo-foo will get you one day. Mm -hmm. This is what he said now. He said, I'm but a dog. I, I betrayed my master. I betrayed my king. And I'm dead. He humbled himself before King David. He reverenced himself before King David. See, beloved, the Bible tells us in James chapter 4 that God gives grace unto who? Those that humble themselves. See, there's many of us right now, you act like I don't need the grace of God. So many of us, we put on the show, we got everything worked out, we got our life ironed out, we got all the problems of life. I have no problems! I'm good. I'm perfect. I'm righteous. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm telling you right now, every single one of us in the midst, need the grace of God in our life. We need God to do those supernatural things that you and I, we cannot do. We cannot do it, but God can, hallelujah. In an instant, his life has changed, hallelujah. Boy, couldn't you be, I, I imagine. Do you, do you think, do you think this, do you think on Mephibosheth said, well, I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> no, sir. No, ma'am. You can mark it down. I'm speculating here. Let me speculate. Hey, man. Hey, you can mark it down. Hey, when King David told him, fear not, he said, you're going to have a place. You're going to have a place at the king's table forever. Matter of fact, you're not only going to have a place, but you're going to be called my son. You see, man. I can see old Mephibosheth right there. You look excited. Why? Since five years old, since he was five years old, he had nobody there. For five years old, when he's at five years old, and he broke his legs there, and he's living in Lodabar, and he's living in my car's house there. Boy, he felt like nobody loved him. Nobody appreciated him. Nobody seen him for who he could be. Right? Hey, man. Hey, man. 
But here he is now at the lowest of his life. And the king called his name. The king sent a servant. Caleb, I could just imagine this here. We're done on this, I promise you. I could just imagine this here. In our day, when we get a knock on the door, it seemed like people, they tuck, tuck tail and run, run away, right? They close the curtains. Don't answer the door. I don't know who it is. Huh? Don't you go to that door. I'm not ready, right? Whatever it may be. I can just imagine this, though. Here's Mephibosheth, right? He's at the house of Micah, right? And lo and behold, the servant of David knocks on the door. And boy, the owner of the house opens up the door. Who are you? I've come on the behalf of the king. Oh, oh, okay. Better change my tone of voice. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? What do you want? Is there a man by the name of Mephibosheth in your house? And you know the answer. The answer that he gave, yes. Can you imagine that? And then the servant of the king. The Bible says that David sent for Mephibosheth. The servant of the king comes before him and said, Hey, art thou Mephibosheth? I'm him. The king has required your audience. You need to come before the king. And old Mephibosheth came before King David. What was going through his mind, we don't know. But I believe that the Bible is telling us exactly what we need to know. That Mephibosheth couldn't open up his mouth before King David said a word. And that's how Jesus works. He moves first. Christ takes the initiation first. He moves towards you. He draws you with His love first. He said, Mephibosheth, I want to show you a favor. I want to show you kindness. And not just man's kindness of being nice, doing polite things, good things. But what did He say now? I want to show you the kindness of God. That's what He said. And that's exactly what He did. And I believe the God of heaven right now is knocking on some of you in your doors. Right now, He's knocking on your heart's door. The servant has come. The Holy Ghost of God is dealing with you. You know, first and foremost, you need to be saved. He's knocking on your heart. You're holding on to religion. You're holding on to a false profession. You're holding on to something else than what Jesus Christ has done. You never met Him. He's knocking on your heart and saying, Come. Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll no eyes cast you out. If you come to me, I will receive you. If you come to me, I will save you. I will make you a new person instantly, right then and there. But I believe now as well that the servant, the Holy Spirit of God, is knocking on your heart's door. You're in the wrong land. You're eating at the wrong table, and you need to come back to the king. You need to come back to the king. I implore you, answer the call. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this wonderful story. God, there are those in our midst, they're hurting and they need to get healing today in the name of Jesus. God, there are those that are struggling with temptations and they need to be delivered. God, there are those in our midst right here now. Lord, all they've done is made a profession but never been born again. This morning be the morning that be saved by the grace of God. I pray that the Holy Ghost of God will move in our midst. God and people will respond and come and find grace in the eyes of God. Bless we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. You stand to your feet, please.